So one of the most important parts of every Assassin's Creed game is the combat system. From the earlier titles like Assassin's Creed 1 all the way up until Rogue to the combat in Assassin's Creed Unity and Syndicate and even the RPG games with the latest combat mechanics. Each iteration has its unique approach, but which Assassin's Creed game actually has the best combat system? Before I start though, please do remember that this entire video is purely my own opinion and it is completely subjective. It's fine to disagree and have your own thoughts. So yeah, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Starting off in last place for me would have to be Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I think universally this might be the most agreed spot for the combat in the series. If I had to describe Assassin's Creed Syndicate's combat in a nutshell, just imagine a butter knife. Now imagine a plastic butter knife. Stabbing enemies in Assassin's Creed Syndicate felt like I was stabbing them with a plastic butter knife. While the previous game in the series being Assassin's Creed Unity focused on a somewhat realistic and engaging approach, Assassin's Creed Syndicate decided to opt for a complete shift in how combat was approached. The combat was very reliant on combos, in which you need to spam attack just to defeat a single enemy. It pretty much boiled down to just three things, and that is attack, parry and break an enemy's defense. The game pretty much held your hand for combat, as there would be flashes of yellow or just which button to press above an enemy's health bar, indicating when to dodge. And speaking of the health bar, I don't particularly enjoy seeing health bars in any video game. That's just a personal preference of mine. I feel as if the usage of a health bar just further adds to the game holding your hand. What I like is when I don't know how much health the enemy I'm fighting has left. It creates more of an immersive experience. Do you remember the good old days when the combat in Assassin's Creed allowed you to disarm enemies, even taunt them or use their own weapons against them? Assassin's Creed Syndicate had pretty much none of that. It felt like a complete reversal in combat when compared to the older games. The combat in Assassin's Creed Syndicate ended up with you stabbing an enemy like 15 or 20 times before they eventually decided to die. The multi kills were another thing that was so poorly implemented. You would have to have all the enemies around you that you're fighting be at a low health, where they'd just stay in a phase of being stunned. It did not help that every single type of enemy in the game had a very similar or if not the same swaying animation when stunned. It just looked way too cartoonish in the way they sway around which overall just made the whole experience of combat feel a bit weird. Besides the cartoony movements, the animation as a whole in terms of how Eevee or Jake would attack or dodge were pretty good. But to say the animations are the only positive in a video that's all about the combat systems is not exactly a positive outlook. When it came to the weapon selection in Assassin's Creed Syndicate, it pretty much came out of three options which are the Kukri, the Cane and the Brass Knuckles. And each weapon in my opinion felt the exact same. They may have different stats and numbers to them, but when you're actually engaging in combat, you can't tell the difference. My biggest disappointment with Syndicate's combat is the absence of efficient parries and counter moves. I feel as if these types of features should be a staple for any combat in any video game. I believe the combat experience would benefit a lot more with more diverse enemy types. I mean seeing the same big bold guy did not exactly fill me with excitement. Instead of having enemies with predictable behaviours, it would have been a lot better to just encounter enemies who switched up their movesets during combat. So yeah, I've got Assassin's Creed Syndicate's combat system dead last for me. Now don't get me wrong, the game itself is decent, it's just the combat for me that was its weakest part. Next up after Syndicate, I've gone with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the second RPG game in the series. You'd think after Assassin's Creed Origins that the combat in the next game up would be further improved. Well that's not the case when it came to Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Now don't get me wrong, the combat in Odyssey was relatively similar to Origins, but it downgraded in terms of how weighty and damaged Spongy felt. Assassin's Creed Odyssey took a very surprising, unrealistic and fantastical turn as it pretty much replaced what we all know and love as the Hidden Blade and exchanged it for the Spear of Leonidas. And this change did not exactly sit quite well with many people. I for one was also in that boat. I mean I get it that the game is set before the hidden ones or the assassins were even a thing but that's on Ubisoft. Why make a game way before the time period of Origins if they knew the hidden blade would be non-existent? There's also the introduction of magical abilities such as poisonous or flaming blades, invisibility and superhuman feats, which just like Syndica added a somewhat comically unrealistic element to the combat. This complete deviation from raw and thought provoking combat just damaged the whole overall experience. Now this part might just be me but I felt as if parrying was super inconsistent. The window of opportunity to execute a parry felt rather strange. There's also blocking enemy attacks which was quite silly as often at times you would accidentally send an enemy flying out of reach. 
all because you wanted to parry. This completely removed the ability to counter attack as the enemies that you parried would then be quite distant from you which would then force you to resort to unrealistic looking rolls. Now that you think about it, the rolls kind of look similar to the ones in Dark Souls. One of the more frustrating things on top of the inconsistent parrying was the unblockable attacks. You see while in the older games unblockable attacks were quite fun to take on but in Assassin's Creed Odyssey it felt like aimbot. Another issue that I had was the kicking. I know this bit isn't just me but you know when you see an enemy often on a ledge or a rooftop you knew what was coming right? In your head you had it all planned out. You thought you'd spot and kick an enemy off the building and send them to their death. But no, the game decides to just benefit the enemy and omit the ability to kick them off. This could be due to an invisible wall or something. I mean we had a perk that was called Spartan Kick and sometimes it would not work as intended. When it came to naval combat, it was way easier than Black Flag, which is not a good thing. In Assassin's Creed Black Flag, the naval combat felt challenging at times. It was more fun. You'd sometimes plan which cannonball or projectile to use. But in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, it's just aim and shoot. I just felt as if the raw combat mechanic should have been prioritised a lot more over the unrealistic stuff that they added. Seeing different numbers over enemies heads that could often go into the millions made it quite silly. Having enjoyed a lot of combat systems in the Assassin's Creed games, Odyssey stands out as my second least favourite. Everything else though in Odyssey was quite fun. I love the world of ancient Greece, the side quests and the exploration feel to the game. Next up is two games at the same spot which I'm sure you can understand and that is Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Rogue. Let's just get it out of the way. Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Rogue had almost identical combat so I believe it's only fair to rank them on the same level. If I had Black Flag and Rogue at different rankings in this video then that would make no sense as it would just look like favouritism. Anyway let's just focus on the combat. The combat in both Black Flag and Rogue is very straightforward. I mean if anybody struggled with the combat in these games then that is the definition of skill issue. Just like the previous games before such as Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood and Revelations, Black Flag and Rogue was more so what strategy worked out for certain enemies. The fluid and somewhat seamless gameplay is what made Black Flag a great game. The overall variety of enemies that were in Black Flag and Rogue are not at all damage sponges like the previous two games I mentioned. In fact I think it's the complete opposite which could be considered a positive. I say could because this could also mean that since the enemies are very easy in these two games and lack the challenge, it pretty much gave you less of a reason to get the best weapons in the game. Oh and speaking of the weapons, I don't know if it's just me but I felt as if there was barely a difference when it came to what sword you had. For example, the default sword that you get at the very beginning of the game felt as if it hit the same as the best sword in the game. If there was a sword that had 5 speed, 5 combo and 5 damage, I for one would not think that it would hit harder than the default sword. I think this is purely because of how easy the combat was and how weak the enemies are which made it less appealing for the different swords. Every enemy pretty much had the worst defense I've ever seen. All you had to do was break their defense once and the window of opportunity to finish them off with one simple stab was very apparent. The best way that I can describe both Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Rogue's combat is floaty. It felt as if you could just glide between enemies and often never take damage. I genuinely reckon if I made a video where the video would end if I took damage, I think the video might be over an hour long. Rushing through these two games was quite easy as it did not offer many options such as a lack of skill progression, the selection of weapons to choose from as well as unlocking tools. They were just pretty much given to you. If we look back at a game like Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood, unlocking tools required actual progress which could be with Leonardo da Vinci, the Thieves Guild or just by purchasing them in shops. In Assassin's Creed Black Flag the game just quietly gives you these things and says here have fun I guess. One of the major issues I had with the combat is that at times the sound would just completely cut out when the swords are clashing. At first when I experienced this I thought it was just a bug in my game and all I had to do was simply restart it and it would be fixed. But no, this was an issue that occurred all the way back to the Xbox 360 days. It was a thing that bothered me especially seeing Edward perform a finishing move when all of a sudden the sound would just cut out from nowhere. So yeah. Overall the combat in both Black Flag and Rogue is not at all frustrating or hard, it's simply just lackluster and easy. It felt as if it needed more tougher enemies, adept to the weapons and also strategic planning when it came to engaging in combat. Oh boy, now this is a confusing one. People may see that I've ranked Valhalla's combat over Black Flag and start flooding with hate comments. But hear me out, I'm not the biggest fan of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I've mentioned this many times on this channel. 
But if there's one thing that I can somewhat appreciate out of this game, it would have to be Ubisoft's attempt at combat. The combat as a whole is just decent. You see, while I do think that it's not the worst thing in this game, I strongly believe that Ubisoft should have leaned more towards the style of Assassin's Creed Origins. The abilities in Assassin's Creed Valhalla felt a lot more like they were finishers rather than abilities themselves, and these just integrated into the flow of combat. One thing that I did enjoy was the return of the Hidden Blade, which was not in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. The Hidden Blade itself throughout Assassin's Creed Valhalla was not used much in combat, as the combat itself was more focused on brutality, which was very reminiscent of the Viking era. The usage of axes, swords, daggers and hammers was very much apparent as it should be. The return of what Origins did so well, which was the different variations of bows and shields, was a nice feature as it added a lot to the actual variety of combat. When it came to the variation of enemy types, I did enjoy those quite a bit. Since it is a newer game on a newer engine with new everything, the types of enemies that we'd encounter were largely upgraded from the older games. The combat in Assassin's Creed Valhalla combined a few elements from Origins, but also avoided what I would consider the weak parts from Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is what made it better than Odyssey's combat system. While it may not fully capture the essence of an Assassin's Creed experience or deliver a true Viking fantasy, it does incorporate quite a good amount of stuff that you'd expect to see from the time period of Vikings, such as raids, longships, hammers and axes. And speaking of the raids, this is where the combat to me would truly shine the most. You'd work with your viking clan to plunder and pillage, creating a rewarding experience that felt worth it. The incentive of taking part in these raids is what made me like the combat more than the previous games I mentioned. The skill tree however, oh boy, this was something that I just despised. It made the game way too complicated by adding so many different variations of a certain skill. I get it that it's an RPG game, but the RPG games that I've played are not as crazy when it comes to the skill tree as Valhalla's. When it came to the boss fights in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I had mixed feelings. There were a few bosses that felt enjoyable to take on, but there were also some that were just outright stupidly developed. For example, the Daughters, and even the Fenrir boss in Asgard. These two were more frustrating than hard, and this is coming from somebody that absolutely loves the Souls games. Comparing Valhalla's bosses to a Dark Souls boss is night and day. There's just a lack of strategic approaches when it comes to the bosses in Valhalla. Going back to the actual combat, I did notice that dodging was not really implemented well at all. You'd often feel weightless and detached from the actual battle, which makes a fight less enjoyable. The camera movement especially during stun attacks was so poorly executed. It consisted of a lot of movement, which can be often disorienting, especially during close fights. Comparing it to a game like Ghost of Tsushima where you could easily tell the cinematic and camera movement in combat is perfectly executed with little to none disorienting camera movement. So yeah, while there were some parts of the combat I did enjoy, there were also parts that I didn't, which is why I placed it here in the video. Assassin's Creed 1 The very first Assassin's Creed game Surprisingly, seeing as it is the first game, it's not actually got the worst combat. Of course, by today's standards, it's far from great. It just practically sets a blueprint and a foundation for the rest of the series. The combat in the original Assassin's Creed pretty much captured the flow of what medieval sword fights were like. The actual combat system however consisted pretty much of just basic attacks, dodges and a nice parry system. There's also the advanced side of it where you could further expand upon regular attacks with combo attacks, heavy attacks, tossing enemies which I quite liked a lot and also throwing knives which is a staple as it did originate from Assassin's Creed 1. The combat system as a whole gave quite a lot of variation to it, so that it did not feel lackluster or mundane. It simply kept me interesting enough for me to engage in. Its most standout feature for me is that it actually had a learning curve to it, unlike Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Rogue, where you could simply stab every enemy in sight without breaking a sweat, which is what made that game feel less rewarding. With Assassin's Creed 1, you cannot just spam attacks and expect to kill an enemy. You could get counted easily, which could lead to massive amounts of your health draining. My favourite feature in Assassin's Creed 1's combat is by far the counter kill. This move quickly became my most used attack, where I would need to perfectly execute a counter when an enemy is attacking. Of course, some people may think that this is repetitive, but it's a feature that I quite enjoyed. In terms of what Altair used for his combat, it's pretty much a sword, a knife and a hidden blade. But each of those offered their own unique way of approaching combat. And there really wasn't one particular weapon out of the three that was considered overpowered. It was pretty much just balanced well. Of course, since this is the very first game, there were no weapon upgrades or weapon types like we see in the games after. So yeah, among all the combat systems in Assassin's Creed, I'd say that this would be quite in the middle of the pack. It manages to be a mechanically and visually pleasing system that made me feel quite immersed in the combat. 
Yeah, there isn't any flashy stuff for acrobatic movement animations, but it's just got the perfect mix of an assassin and a fighter. Unlike in Assassin's Creed Syndicate, this game's combat did not hold your hand by prompting you when to dodge. It gives you an actual incentive to learn the movesets. So yeah, when it came to the combat in Assassin's Creed 1, I'd say it's balanced well. It was not broken or terrible, but it did do its job, and that was to satisfy me when fighting enemies. So the next game I've gone with is Assassin's Creed 2, the very first Ezio game, and also the second game. I personally think that the combat in Assassin's Creed 2 is a step up from Assassin's Creed 1. However, the positives definitely outweigh the negatives. The game itself is a game with a very devoted fanbase, but once you take off those nostalgia tinted glasses, is the combat really on the level of the top 3 in the series? My answer is no. I will say it's pretty much in the middle of the pack. In Assassin's Creed 2, we had access to quite a decent amount of weapons, enabling us to disarm guards, and even using their own weapons against them, which is something that stood out to me the most when it came to the combat. Oh, and just like Assassin's Creed Black Flag, the sound design of the combat did suffer quite a bit. Well, at least that's what I experienced when I played it earlier this year on PC. When compared to its predecessor being Assassin's Creed 1, it pretty much takes the best elements of that game and adds a little twist to it such as counter kills, blocks, dodges, and also throwing knives. I think my favourite thing about Assassin's Creed 2 is just straight up grabbing a smaller enemy and then using the sword to slit their neck. It was so broken in the Ezio games to the point where you could use it for pretty much every smaller enemy one after the other. When it came to the visuals of the combat, it was almost identical to Assassin's Creed 1, where the animations felt the same, but they did add a few new ones. Of course, after Assassin's Creed 2 is where the combat truly shines. I'll talk more about those games later on. So essentially, what I'm trying to say is that Assassin's Creed 2 overall made quite some important changes over Assassin's Creed 1. Features like the disarm mechanic was something I liked quite a lot, and it added a great addition to the variation of combat that was implemented. There's also the enemy types that were upgraded with a more diverse selection to encounter, which added more enjoyment to the game itself. When it came to the selections of weapons that we'd be presented with, it was definitely expanded upon. These would include swords, knives, daggers, maces and other stuff. You could even upgrade your armour over time, which would make a direct impact on Ezio's health. It gave you more of an incentive to upgrade the villa stuff to make more money, and then using that money to upgrade on gear. When it came to how easy or hard the combat was, well, if you were good at perfect time encounters, then the combat itself is pretty easy overall. I did notice that this was the only Ezio game where the hidden blades were broken. If you were fighting, let's say, a group of four, you could easily dispatch of them with the hidden blade itself, because the enemies for some reason in this game did not exactly react to what you were doing. What kind of bothered me about the combat narrative is that we saw Ezio as a teenager before he even knew what the assassins were, but he was still able to do perfect assassin-like stuff without even training for it. I do wish Ubisoft showcased his growth to be a little more believable, instead of just a 17 year old who knew how to assassinate and leap off face instantly. So yeah, in conclusion, the combat of Assassin's Creed 2 has a lot of good things for it. The variety of weapons, counters and variations in combat truly excel, making it enjoyable overall. Now we have the third and final Ezio game in Assassin's Creed Revelations. You may wonder why I've included Revelations before Brotherhood, even though you may say they perform the same. Well for me, I think Revelations was a little less engaging in its combat when compared to Brotherhood. But if I was to compare Revelations with the combat from the previous games I ranked in this video, Assassin's Creed Revelations is way more refined and improved over those games. The introduction of the Hookblade is one of the additions that made the combat and traversal of this game so entertaining. Speaking of the Hookblade, I made a video where I talked about the hidden blades in Assassin's Creed and I put the Hookblade as my number one favourite, simply because of how good it is. The most notable thing I can say about the combat in Assassin's Creed Revelations is the enemy types. This game definitely built upon the enemy types and one that stood out to me were the Janissaries. These were the trained elite soldiers of the Ottoman Empire. If somebody ever said Assassin's Creed combat is pretty easy, just show them the Janissaries. These guys were quite difficult in their own way to take down, and could often be a pain in the ass. But personally, I think that they are some of the best designed and implemented enemies into the entire Assassin's Creed series. Once you actually get the hang of how to defeat them, the combat becomes quite manageable. I recommend using the armor of Ishak Pasha, as it has a high chance of deflecting bullets. When you compare both Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and Revelations, I will say that Revelations definitely built on Brotherhood in a way when it came to the kill chains, although I didn't really use it as much as I did in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. There's also the recruiting assassins and even the combat animations. 
There's one particular weapon in Assassin's Creed Revelations that's known as the Dagger of Brutus, where it quite literally would turn Ezio into a very, very brutal fighter. The animations when using that dagger would give Ezio the animations of piercing a dagger into their heads, as well as many other brutal animations. There is also the introduction of the Den defense. And yes, while this is not actual melee combat, it's still technically combat, and I thought I should just mention it. I wasn't really a fan of this feature, as it didn't give me any incentive to do it. It also did not fit into the game. It felt like Ubisoft just added this to make the game feel like there's more to it. So yeah, overall the combat in Assassin's Creed Revelations is pretty good. The most difficult decision in this entire video was to pick which game between Brotherhood and Revelations would be placed higher. Now, after Assassin's Creed Revelations, I definitely had to include Assassin's Creed Brotherhood after it. This is one of my favourite games, not just in Assassin's Creed, but of all time. The combat in this game was heavily improved from Assassin's Creed 2 in many ways. There was new weapon types that we did not see in Assassin's Creed 2 that made an introduction, such as the crossbow, which impacted both overall combat as well as stealth. The whole system with the chain kills was pretty amazing. Yes, I know some people may think that it takes away from the gameplay, as you're just pretty much mashing buttons, but for me, I enjoyed it a lot. It made Ezio feel like a complete badass assassin that was quite literally unstoppable. One of my favourite things about the combat in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood is that it's not broken and it does actually feel quite challenging. In games like Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Rogue, the protagonist feels a lot like a rock and could barely take damage. But in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Ezio is more fragile and can often get quite low on health while also providing a great deal of damage. One of my favourite features of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood would have to be the Assassin Recruits feature. You'd pretty much stumble upon a potential assassin in need of help and once you help them, you're able to recruit them to the Brotherhood. Now the reason I enjoy this a lot in terms of how it impacts combat is that you were able to use these assassins to execute quick assassinations or perhaps unleash a flow of arrows onto enemies. One thing that I mentioned earlier in this video is that in Assassin's Creed 2, you were able to perform this somewhat broken mechanic of spamming your hidden blade and constantly taking out enemies before they could even react. In Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, this is very much less apparent, which thank god, because although it would make combat a lot easier, it just didn't look right. Instead, in Brotherhood, you could take out maybe the first two enemies with the hidden blade, but that's it, the other enemies would block the hidden blade attack. One very notable feature that, thank god, they approved upon is the hidden gun. In Assassin's Creed 2, the hidden gun was really tedious when you attempted to shoot an enemy that was already enraged with you. The time between aiming and shooting was massively slow in Assassin's Creed 2. But in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, they reduced the aim to fire time significantly, making it a lot easier to use. There is also the Leonardo da Vinci war machines, which gave us a very different approach to things. The satisfaction of taking out enemies with a single attack felt quite fun to do. Story-wise, this is pretty much Ezio's prime, so it is understandable that his combat will feel so good. It would have absolutely sucked to see an underwhelming combat system in a game where the protagonist is in his prime. All in all, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood brought a lot of new groundbreaking stuff to the table in terms of combat and made you feel like a real assassin. It innovated the combat system as a whole, making it in my opinion one of the better combat experiences in the series. Now this may or may not be a surprise to see, an RPG game this high up in the video? That's absurd. Well, let me attempt to explain myself. When I compare this game to Odyssey and Valhalla, the combat system as a whole is way better. It's revamped from the previous game being Syndicate as it removed the need for scripted movesets and planned attacks. The game shifts from the anime based combat to a hitbox style, which gained a lot of popularity in the gaming world at the time of its release. Assassin's Creed Origins pretty much just took inspiration from one of my favourite games of all time, being The Witcher 3. The inspiration came in the form of its RPG open world style, making them comparable within their own group. When it came to the overall combat of Assassin's Creed Origins, in my opinion it had one of the best combat systems in the series. And even though it's an RPG game which many people may dislike, if you just remove your hatred for one moment, you'd realise that the combat system itself is definitely one of a kind. 
It wasn't as flashy as Assassin's Creed Odyssey or as finisher reliant as Valhalla. It was just a mix with a more simplistic approach which was executed perfectly. In Assassin's Creed Origins the combat feels fast and weighty and it's a lot better balanced when compared to the more aggressive pace of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. You see when it came to Odyssey it felt way too floaty and by floaty I'm referring to a situation where you would be aiming your bow but you'd still be at the same speed as running while it's aimed in. It just didn't make sense. The combat system in Assassin's Creed Origins was the very first introduction of parrying with a shield which gave us way more control over Bayek. In the previous games you could only parry with your sword which may often slow down combat in a way but in Assassin's Creed Origins it was the complete opposite. A parry pretty much meant more of an opportunity. The combat was just straightforward and effective with no spongy enemies or unfair encounters which was very unlike the next game in the series being Odyssey. In fact looking at it now the decline in combat quality after Origins is quite staggering. Dodging and rolling felt very smooth which was used quite often in this game as there were many times where you could get hit with an unblockable attack and your only option is to dodge out the way. Origins provides a wide range of weapons, shield and armor allowing us to choose different approaches to gameplay. This level of freedom to me made the combat truly enjoyable. The weapon choices in Origins were way more expanded upon when compared to Syndicate. Of course it is an RPG game so that is pretty obvious. There's swords, daggers, staffs, spears and blunt weapons, each with their own rarity such as blue being uncommon, purple being rare and gold being legendary. The shields in Assassin's Creed Origins are so vast and contain so many options to choose from all with their own individual stats and perks to them. And then there's also the bows which was my favourite part. You could choose a light bow, a warrior bow, a hunter bow or a predator bow and each of these types of bows gave their own playstyles to them. My personal favourite was the hunter bow as it was great for long range and also aiming for the head with it was one of the most satisfying things to do. The combat as a whole allowed for some interesting playstyles when it came to the melee combat. The only downside that I'd say is that this game had no main focus on naval combat but then again this is ancient Egypt and there's not exactly a large ocean just around the corner. There are some naval combats to it but that part was very limited and felt a bit underwhelming. The great thing about Origins was that you were able to hunt and loot for skins and elements that would enhance by its tools. And speaking of tools, the hidden blade was a thing too which could be upgraded quite a fair amount. When it came to the types of enemies that we'd face off against in the world of ancient Egypt there was quite a lot including the very first introduction of boss fights. So yeah overall the combat in Assassin's Creed Origins is a top pick for me. While it may not appeal to the people that prefer the older Assassin's Creed games it was certainly something new and entirely different. The time period especially made the combat so fun to play and it fit by perfectly as a protagonist. When I compare this game to the other RPG games, in my opinion Origins just blows it out of the water, not just in its combat system but in everything else. Ok now we move on to the top 2 and after quite a while of thinking about it, I've gone and decided on Assassin's Creed Unity. This game had a very mixed review when it came to everything about it, whether that be the story, the combat and surprisingly even the parkour. The combat system approach in Unity is a complete step up from its previous game as it changed engines entirely which meant a whole new way of playing had to be implemented. Assassin's Creed Unity introduced an entirely new variety of weapons whether that be swords, spears, handguns, rifles and even the guillotine gun. The usage of these weapons alongside the raw combat made the game's combat stand out as a whole for its innovation and challenge. It makes you look a lot more invested in mastering the combat mechanics and encourages a way of a more tactical approach rather than just running in guns blazing. I will say that there was one slight flaw that could bother a lot of people and that was the delayed response when you press the attack button. I say this because an animation would play before you were able to effectively perform another action which could leave you vulnerable to attacks. But this is what I meant when I said it required a more tactical approach. The combat made you think about your actions and when to pounce on enemies. Remember the instant kill counters from the older games? Well those are completely gone in Assassin's Creed Unity and were replaced with regular parrying. This pretty much renovated how combat could be tackled. There were no super fast attacks and gliding from one enemy to the other like the older games do. This game required you to emphasize timing and strategy over how quick you are. Arno's movements between the animations looked very elegant and contribute to a less linear combat experience when compared to the previous games. The armor in this game played a more significant role, pretty much affecting your health, stealth, attack range and gun capabilities. It was a lot more important than choosing which weapon to pick. When it came to the enemy types in Assassin's Creed Unity, it pretty much consisted of a regular swordsman, an archer which I absolutely despise and then there's the brutes. 
There was no real enemy that felt like a walkover, each one just simply felt like a threat. These enemies all provided a cinematic experience, as encounters with more than 2 or 3 guards felt like you were watching a movie while still giving you a challenge. The combat animations look amazing and are probably one of my favourite animation styles in the series. The increased difficulty on top of it makes survival a constant concern. It forces you to always attempt to use stealth and stay undetected, creating a more genuine assassin experience. There is also the black box missions which were showcased as well throughout Assassin's Creed Unity, which allowed you to tackle certain objectives and ways to eliminate a target. This would completely change how you would approach combat as instead of charging through the front gate, you might want to sneak into a window or traverse the rooftops, assassinating enemies one by one. The game also implements a skill tree in which would aid you in combat such as upgrading your health, your weapons and special abilities. I'd say this game has the most realistic approach to attempting to tackle combat over any other Assassin's Creed game. I do find it annoying that this game is only criticised because of its buggy launch, but since then it's a near perfect game. So yeah, Assassin's Creed Unity for me is my second favourite combat system. I'm sure by now you can tell what number one is, so let's just get into that. So here we are, my personal favourite Assassin's Creed combat system in the entire series, and that is Assassin's Creed 3. This game has some of the most fun and smooth flowing combat systems in the series, and knowing that a complete beast like Connor was in control of it felt quite fitting. Now I know that this game had a lot of mixed opinions, just like Assassin's Creed Unity, but the combat to me holds such a special place in my heart that makes it truly unforgettable. The introduction of weapons such as the rope dart with Connor's tomahawk is what completely immersed me in the combat. Connor himself as an assassin felt like he was created to just obliterate any enemy in sight. And the way that Assassin's Creed 3 portrays Connor's brutal vibe is great. It's both smooth and responsive, and those animations are simply stunning. The types of weapons besides the two that I mentioned, such as the axes, the daggers, and especially Connor's hidden blade, aka the pivot blade, is truly impressive. Every weapon that Connor was able to use had its own unique animation to it, and there were quite a fair amount of them. The finisher animations especially were a selling point for me, as they were animated so well in this game. The difficulty of each fight was quite confusing to pinpoint. The AI in the enemies were a lot smarter, and the removal of being able to use medicine from previous Ezio games were completely removed, making you take a more thought out approach to things. The amount of guards that you would see around the cities made each fight you take with them so entertaining. Stylistically, when it came to the combat, it was superb visually, just like Assassin's Creed Unity. It felt like a cinematic masterpiece. The variety of weapons, naval combat, Connor's ruthlessness and also the connection of Native America made the combat as a complete package feel outstanding. It's a weird one too, because Connor himself once you fully master everything could become so hard hitting, which may be considered a downside because everything would then be easy. Imagine that, being too strong and then considering it a flaw. The health system reverted to the synchronization system from the first game, meaning that you always entered combat with full health, but since there was no medicine, it made you become wary if your health was low. I would say my only gripe with the combat in Assassin's Creed 3 is the lack of enemy variety. It felt as if Ubisoft should have added a little more, but such a thing like that won't take any of the fun out of the combat system to me. One very important inclusion was the ship combat, which later became a major feature in the series. It offered an entirely new way to engage enemies using broadside cannons, swivel guns and ramming tactics. Remember at the start of the video where I mentioned enemy health bars are something that I did not like? Well in Assassin's Creed 3 these were non-existent, which made the combat a lot more satisfying when using finishing moves. Since the combat in this game was so good, the stealth aspect of it was quite overlooked a lot, as it was not as elaborate as other games in the series. There was no crouch feature, and opportunities to use stealth were pretty limited. But since the combat as a whole is so good, the lack of me using stealth was barely an issue. All in all, Assassin's Creed 3 has my favourite combat system in the entire Assassin's Creed series. Its combat is a fan favourite too because of how unique it is, as well as how perfectly it fits in the time period. So there you have it, I've ranked every combat system in the entire Assassin's Creed games. This video took me quite a while to make, as I had to go back and start engaging in every combat for every Assassin's Creed game, just to get a feel of it. Please bear in mind everything I said in this video is opinion based and is completely subjective. Anyway if you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button, as well as drop a like, it'll help me out a lot. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one.